Hi, everybody. Welcome to the John Meyer Podcast. Today's topic is migrating to the cloud with AWS has a tremendous value, including ISV suppliers. Now, before we actually get to that topic, how about we give our guests a chance to introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Ron Heyman. I'm a U.S. Uh, CSM leader. That's customer solution manager. I'm based in Atlanta. And I lead customer solution management for strategic sales. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers. I'm also a customer solutions leader, and my team supports our U.S. small, mid-sized business segment. Let's talk about ISVs and suppliers. Joel, what is ISVs? ISVs are just partners, AWS partners that kind of build software on the AWS platform to help customers do more in the AWS cloud. When you say do more, what does more mean? <laughs> I, I think a good way to put it is, or, or one way to put it, with over 200 services, the AWS platform is so vast, which provides customers with a lot of opportunity, but can also be kind of overwhelming at times. I think our ISVs do a great job of taking pieces of that vast landscape and making it really easy for customers to use. When they make it easy for customers to use, do they help understand how to utilize those services, how to get more out of AWS? And, you know, what is the value of working with an ISV than working directly with AWS? Yeah, I think it's both. I think they can definitely make our services easier to use. And I think they can also make, make it easier for customers to use more of those services and get more out of the, get add more value for their business. Ron, something that I've noticed over the last couple of years, and it was very predominant when I was an Amazonian at one of our SKOs, that AWS has doubled down on partners and ISVs. Why is that? We have a large ecosystem, over 200 services. No one can be an expert on that. And so it's really important that we find partners, whether they're ISVs or, or partners that are focused on migration, that can really dive deep and understand customer um, use cases that are really important for them. Sometimes that's on an industry vertical. Sometimes that's a deep technical skill, um, but it's always something that they can add value above and beyond what the partner, uh, what the rest of the ecosystem can do and specifically uh, what we can do as an account team. Well, Joel, Ron mentioned it, part of the migration. Part of migration is something that AWS calls the MAP program. What is MAP? Yeah, the MAP program is our migration acceleration program. So it is a package of, it, it's a methodology, it's partner support, it's incentives, and it's monetary investment to help our customers move to the cloud faster and control the cost as they do. Well, cost is a huge benefit. We all know that migrating to the cloud can take not only the skill set, time, and effort doing it, and how are we doing it correctly to actually see if the value is there? So Joel, talk to me about the benefits of working with ISVs, someone like CloudSaver. Yeah, we talked earlier about, about our ISVs making, taking parts of that vast AWS landscape and making it easier to use. I think CloudSaver is a good example of that. The, the Tag Manager product, product, for example, you know, really helps our large enterprise customers kind of organize their AWS resources, uh, get an understanding at a deeper level of service usage, and ultimately helps them reduce cost. Why is tagging, uh, Ron, I got to pass this to you because I always talk about tagging and it feels like one of those boring subjects, right? We, we've all been talking about it going to cost optimization. We got to tag everything correctly. Why is tagging so important when utilizing the MAP program? Tagging is how we attest for the applications, the servers, the workloads that are associated with the investment that we're making uh, into the customer. And so it's important to tag so that we can give the appropriate credit back to the customer during the migration process. And so that's an important part specifically for that program. But in general, tagging is really important for things like show back, charge back, and also just really having a, a good understanding of the workloads that are deployed and who's using them and um, whether or not we need to retire them, refactor them. And so being able to have tagging in place is a really critical step towards having um, a strong operational uh, excellence. Part of the MAP program, is it for you to evaluate the business or the application that has been migrated over within a month, six months, within the year time frame? in order to see that it is properly there, that they completed this task and an investment on both parties? Yeah, that's right. Uh, from a tagging perspective, uh, 
typically when we do a map, it, it's it's a three year. Um, there's three years for them to make the migration move over. The sooner they move over, the faster they can realize the savings and the the credits that we're giving them for the migration. Joel, can you tell me a little bit more about Cloud Saver and how they're addressing maybe tagging dis discrepancies between environments? How are they helping other customers or partners manage this to, so that they can properly receive their incentives and credits from AWS? Yeah, I think our, our, our Map 2.0 program, it, it's a fantastic program for customers, but it can be a little labor intensive. And I think that's really what Cloud Saver does is really take that, that labor intensiveness out of the process and just make it easy for our customers to, to tag their migrated workloads accurately and ensure that they get all the, the credits that they're, that they're entitled to and the, with the program. Have you seen others be able to achieve this, you know, accomplish it and scale? Has there been others who have tried to do like the map on their own, like tagging on their own in the company, but yet haven't been able to address it due to maybe resource or skills con constraints? Sure. A lot of our small mid-sized businesses are, they're, they're pretty lean. You know, they don't have a lot of AWS resources. So, you know, the, the tagging part of the map program sometimes gets, you know, the ball tends to get dropped on that with some of these customers. Um, Cloud Saver, the Cloud Saver product really just kind of automates that and where it makes it so a, a small mid-sized business with a lean team doesn't really have to invest a lot of resources in that to get the credits they deserve. Ron, if you can describe Cloud Saver in one or two words, as a company, as a team working with MAP, what comes to mind? I'd say customer obsession. They're constantly obsessing over the customer, what the problem is, and how they can help them do it better. Sometimes that's for the ability to save money. Sometimes it's for operational excellence. But they're really thinking ahead looking around corners for our customers. And I think that's an important um, trait that you look for in a partner, their ability to look around corners and to really kind of lean into what the customer needs. Joel, can you tell me how working with an ISV helps provide AWS with data points for future clients or data points for future map processes or projects? Yeah, I think our ISVs are great sources of data. Um, they're They're just involved in so many programs and helping customers do so many things and us having access to that data just it really gives us feedback on how customer migrations are going where the pain points are and what we can do at aws to create a better migration experience for our customers well talking about the better customer experience how easy is it to work with cloud saver to achieve these results and realization for your customers it's very easy to work with Cloud Saver. I, I think, you know, Ron kind of alluded to it earlier, but it, it's a very responsive team at Cloud Saver. Um, they have uh, just on the development side, you know, they're able to, to take input and feedback that we give them on what would make the customer experience better and really implement that and get it into production fast. So that's, uh, that, that makes it a lot of fun to work with Cloud Saver because you know that if you give them some ideas, they're going to turn it around very quickly and, and have that not just mocked up, but actually in production for customers to use. Ron, I'm going to pass that to you. How easy has it been to work with Cloud Saver and their team? It's been really easy. Uh, true partnership, really focused on some of the same values that we're focused on. They dive deep into to problems and they work with a broad set of customers. So it really helps us to be able to learn from them as they're learning from us and as we're working together with customers. So there's a lot of kind of that cross-pollination and learning that's happening at the same time. Do you have that constant feedback loop between the two companies? Yes, we work at the executive level um, quite frequently where we're talking about customers and how the tools that we have and how the program works so that we can make sure that they're able to meet the needs of their customers and they understand kind of some of the problems that we're seeing. Uh, we, we're touching hundreds of migrations and so we see common use cases, we see areas where customers struggle with, with maybe tagging, and we can share that knowledge with them and our other partners so that they understand what we're seeing kind of at scale. I think that's important. Joel, we talked about it a little bit ago with problems around tagging, the skills or even resource constraint, right? And if you look at a large enterprise company that has multiple AWS accounts, a huge organization, 
there's not one person or one team that can accomplish this on their own. And if they can, do you think the one big issue is that resources change and tagging drifts? Absolutely. I mean, resource turnover in, in our large enterprises is always going to be an issue, not, not just with tagging, but lots of things. So if that, if that key resource that does the tagging leaves, then there's a void there and that can lead to, you know, that, that can lead to issues with the map program or just issues with understanding their AWS footprint and, and usage and cost and other things as well. Well, the tribal knowledge actually leaves the company and they understand what they're doing and how they're doing it. When you're utilizing an ISV like CloudSaver to utilize, to see that tagging and see it, it you don't have to have that tribal knowledge. You Absolutely. understand that that's part of it. Let me dive in a little bit more into the map process. How do I know or that a resource is part of it? And if I leave the company, how do I, and that tag change, how do we know to tag that resource back with it for the map process? Yeah, that's the good thing about Map Manager is, is it provides that continuity, you know, regardless of the personnel or resource changes. It always gives you a, a clear picture of, of your Map program and what's tagged and what's not tagged. So regardless of your, your personnel issues, uh, Map Manager will, will keep the consistency there. Talk to me more about Map Manager. Yeah, Map Manager is just a, it, it's a program that, that helps customers with tagging compliance when it comes to the Map program and understanding what resources are in scope for the migration and making sure that those resources are tagged properly so the customer gets credit for the credit for those workloads. Ron, does all resources like EC2 instances, EBS, S3, all, all those resources or IP addresses get tagged with it or there's some in and out of scope for a map process? There are definitely some in and out of scope things and the program is constantly changing. Uh, we may add additional uh, EC2 instances that are now eligible. And that's one of the great things about CloudSaver. When Joel was talking about the fact that they're very responsive, it's not just in the development. It's also in understanding the program and, and really quickly being able to update what's in scope and what, what can be uh, tagged so that they can get credit for it in the map program. So that's a really valuable piece of what they do is not just the development, but understanding the program inside and out and advocating for the customer by making sure that those new services and features are available for tagging. I didn't know that only a subset or specific instances are part of the program. Like, how is that identified? There's only certain ones, or is it unique for each type of customer that's migrating? So what will happen is we'll release new instances um, over time. And so maybe it's, uh, the newest instance is not uh, is not available yet to be tagged, and so as that gets um, put into the system that it's eligible, it's important that an application like Tag Manager is aware that that's now eligible, so that you can get credit for that. And so their ability to kind of monitor what's happening, understand when these changes are happening, and then update their um, their service so that customers can get the full benefit is you know, a really valuable piece of what they do. Joel, this might be diving into it a little bit deep because I'm looking at an instance that I migrated over that's part of the MAP program. In a year's time, I noticed that I can optimize that instance and I can go to another one. Joel, can you talk to me about some of the AWS services that are part of the MAP program? Is RDS, uh, I and mean, we already know e, uh, EC2 is part of it, but maybe some RDS instances. Are there other ones that are part of the program? Yeah, m most services are part of the MAP program. There's a, there's a few outlier services that aren't eligible for the program, but the majority of AWS services are, are eligible for credits. Okay, so then here's my question, Ron. Why doesn't everybody just migrate? I mean, you, I mean, all eligible applications, because we know some workloads can't, you know, we know we have some local zones, some data that we know those are possible, some outposts that you can have into it. But the value that AWS provides, utilizing the MAP program to migrate to AWS is being incentivized to get there and use some of the best services that are known for hyperscalers. I'd agree. It does seem like a no-brainer. And the real benefit of the cloud is not just the migration, right? You'll obviously enjoy cost savings. We have programs like MAP, which are really uh, great incentives to help customers start their journey towards uh, 
migrating to AWS. But the real value comes from the additional services, from modernization, uh, from the innovation that can come from having those workloads in AWS. We talk a lot about generative AI this week, a lot about AI ML. And to really use those use cases, the first thing you need to do is, is move those workloads and move the data to AWS. And so I think that's the real value. Um, the migration is the, the first step towards getting the higher value that you can get from, from cloud and from AWS. So Joel, we were talking about migrating to AWS and getting the value out of it, and then also getting the value of using someone like CloudSaver to stay compliant with the MAP program. The additional value is using AWS services with your migration to get the most out of it for cost savings, and then taking that money back to your company for R&D, innovation, and basically achieving higher revenue. Joel? Absolutely. Yeah, I think the, the key is to just move to the cloud as quickly as you can. Simplify the migration. I think some of our customers tend to make it very complicated and want to refactor on the way into the cloud. I think that has a tendency to stall some migration projects by making it too complicated. You know, we recommend just, just move, get to the cloud, and then worry about the refactoring and modernization things. So that, that's, that tends to be the best practice. Move to the cloud quickly and then worry about modernizing and, and refactoring after that. I'd love to add to that. Uh, Joel makes a really great point. Moving to the cloud is that first step. And if you think about the cost of straddling an on-premise data center at the same time that you're moving workloads and then trying to refactor them, it creates a lot of strain on, on the team and it, and it really distracts them from being able to get to the innovation. So moving those workloads and, and that incentive program, I think, is, is that first step. And then you can modernize as, you, as you're in the cloud. And then that way you're not kind of straddling three different states, uh, uh, on-premise, a uh, migrated state, and then refactoring uh, some of the things that you've moved or, or before you move it. And so I, I, I think that's really the right way to look at it. it it's a, an important thing to think about what your strategy is and how you're going to execute that strategy. There comes a time where analysis by, by paralysis comes into play and larger companies tend to do that because they have a slower process, governments, everything. But those who are born in the cloud, uh, those who are born with the idea will start in the cloud. Uh, smaller companies, smaller shops will easily go to the cloud. But the longer ones of getting there, they need to understand, you know, they want to refactor. They don't know if they should retire. They go through a whole too long, two year process and they just wasted all that money when moving over and then start utilizing the services comes into play. Absolutely. I definitely agree with you. All right, Joel, we're going to wrap things up. Where can someone find more information, not only about the MAP process, some of the compliance, some of the partners who are participating in it, uh, maybe Cloud Saver? Yeah, I would leverage your AWS account team. You know, there should be your, your first stop to, to learn more about the Migration Acceleration Program and then our, our ISV partners that can help accelerate that process. Well, obviously you're here and you see the value of not only utilizing some, an ISV like CloudSaver and helping with the tagging and the process out there to stay compliant. I, I love that you're advocating for your partners and out there just showing the value of them. Ron, where's some more information that they can not only find for the MAP Accelerator, but those who are participating in it? So the account team is a great place to start. We also have Marketplace. So... That's a great place to go Wait and look. a second. What do you mean a, you have a marketplace for it? You can just type in, oh, AWS Marketplace. AWS Marketplace, uh, I should, yeah. I should have guessed that. Yeah, and that's a great place to go and look at the different ISVs that are partnered with AWS and have programs that either complement uh, what we do or, or maybe have a, a different way that they deliver that same service. I agree. All right, Ron, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Joel, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Well, everybody, this has been another awesome episode for the John Meyer Podcast. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify because guess what? We're out of here.